Welcome back to this module on strings. In this final part, we'll do a collection of exercises. We'll write various functions to process strings. First, we'll write a function to change a string's characters to uppercase letters. Then we'll write a string function that returns a new copy of a string with all the characters converted to uppercase, the same operation, but a deep copy instead. Then we'll write a function to double space a paragraph. For every endline character, we'll double it and add two endline characters. Then we'll write a split style function that'll take a string and a delimiter and returns an array of strings of those tokens. And we'll ensure that there are no memory leaks. I've already written the prototypes along with the documentation. This first one will take a string and change all of its alphabetic characters to their uppercase versions. The string is not const, so we will be making changes to it. We'll need to iterate over each character, so we'll use that same for loop that we developed earlier. For each i, while strings of i is not equal to the null terminating character, we'll increment i by 1, and for each one, we'll change it into its uppercase version using two upper in the C-type library. We don't have to worry about whether or not it contains punctuation or spaces, because two upper will return the same character if it has no uppercase equivalent. Let's try it out. We'll print it out before and after. The punctuation and the space are unaffected. Now let's write two uppercase copy, which will return a new string that's a copy of the given string, but with all the alphabetic characters converted to uppercase. Now in this case, the pass string is const, so we will not be making changes to it. First, we need to create a new string that will be a copy of the other string. Plus one to include the null terminating character. Then we'll need to go through this copy and change every character to its uppercase equivalent. and finally return the copy. Now hopefully that entire time you were screaming in your head. You'll notice that the first two lines are direct copies of lines 47 and 48, and that line 62 through 64 are direct copies of lines 53 through 55. We already wrote this code. We already put it into different functions. We should be using those functions. We'll call the copy string function, and then we'll call to uppercase on the copy. DRY, don't repeat yourself. The entire reason that we define functions is so that we can reuse them. Let's test this. I'll print them both out to ensure that no changes are made to the first string. And it looks like everything works so far. Let's do this function now. It returns a new string that is a copy of the given string, but with all endline characters doubled. So for every endline character that we see, we'll want to insert two. We could have designed this function 
so that we made changes to the given string, but there's no guarantee that it's gonna be big enough to hold the extra endline characters. So I've chosen to design this so that we're not making changes to the string and instead creating a new copy of it with all the spaces doubled. Our first step here is to count the number of endline characters because we're going to create a new dynamic string that it's going to have to hold the contents of the old string plus all the new endline characters. Our counting shouldn't be just any white space character. It needs to be the actual endline character. The length of the new string is going to be the length of the old string, plus the number of endline characters, plus one to accommodate the null terminating character. Now instead of directly copying this, I'm going to find it easier to iterate over the old string and for each character that we encounter, if it's not an endline character, simply copy it over. But if it is an endline character, then we'll copy it over twice. Now to do either one of these, I'm going to need another index variable here. The index variable i is being used to track characters in str. We also need to be tracking the characters in the copy, which could potentially be different. In fact, the first endline character that we see, it will become different. I'll create a different index variable for the copy. and copy two endline characters instead. Now I will automatically advance with respect to the for loop. J, however, will need to advance by two in this case because we've written two characters. Otherwise, we copy over the ith character into copies jth index and be sure to increment j by one. This is pretty complex, so let's make sure to test it. And now each one of those single endline characters is doubled. It looks like it works, but if you'll notice, there are actually three question marks here. There was a question mark in the original, but the other two were an attempt to interpret garbage values as it was printed to the standard output. The reason for this is that the copy was never properly null terminated. Now this ended up not crashing our program, but it did print garbage values. And if we tried to do anything more sophisticated with this, it would probably start corrupting our own memory. So even though we copied over every single character properly, we need to close our copy with a null terminating character. Now what index is that at? It's one less than the new length. And now it works properly. Now you might've seen an optimization that we could have done here. On line 72, I'm calling strlen, yet again iterating over the string another time, even though I already iterated over it once to count up the number of endline characters. I could have done this instead manually by iterating over it just once and not using the strlen function and kept track of both the number of endline characters 
and the total number of characters myself. I'll leave you to do this optimization. Our last function is going to be the most complex. It's going to be a lot like str toke. We'll tokenize the given string str along some delimiter, but at the same time, we'll build a new two-dimensional array of strings, each one containing the token. We then return the two-dimensional array, or the array of strings, to the calling function. However, the calling function also needs to be told how many rows or how many strings are in the resulting array. That's what we use the third parameter for. It's a pass by reference parameter that will set equal to the number of tokens in the resulting array. Now our first trick is going to determine how many rows we need to create. To do that, we simply go through and count up the number of delimiters. Now, if this looks familiar, it's because it is. This exact code was written just in double space. There though, we were counting up the number of endline characters. Hopefully this is screaming out to you to define yet another function, count char, where you go through a string and you count up the number of characters of a particular type. Let's do that really quick. Now this code can be replaced. And so can this. Now back to our split function. We're going to want to use str toke, but str toke does not take a single character delimiter. Instead, it takes a string of delimiters. We can fix that by creating a static string. And initializing it to the delimiter along with a null terminating character. Now, it might seem strange to use this syntax in the context of strings, but remember, strings are nothing more than char arrays. And we use this exact syntax when we worked with arrays. This creates our array of pointers. Each pointer will eventually point to an entire string. We use num delimiters plus one because if there are three delimiters, then that means that there are four tokens. So we need one extra row. Recall that str toke will change the string that we tokenize. And in this case, we've promised not to make changes to str. So I need to tokenize a copy instead. and we can start tokenizing the copy. We'll want to keep track of the row number. And this time, instead of just printing it out, we actually want to process the token. In this case, process simply means creating a copy of it and putting it into our result array. Remember, on subsequent calls to str toke, to continue tokenizing the same string, you pass null for the first argument. Now remember, we're going to have to inform the calling function of the size of the new array. The size of each row is unimportant because it's a string, and each one is properly null terminated. But the number of rows does need to be communicated back to the calling function.
that's what the size variable is for. Now this is pretty complex, so we've got to be sure to test it. We'll simply split the test string along any space and then print out each token. There are only two spaces in that string, so we would expect three tokens. And we do. I formatted it so that there were single quotes around the entire string. Remember, there are still end line characters in there, so it goes to the next line on these two tokens. Let's go back and make sure that it works even if those are not spaces. In this case, we would expect that there were one, two, three, four, five tokens. And there are. If you ran into any problems in following that, or the result that you come out with doesn't work as expected, make sure to put it through a debugger. This is the perfect exercise to test out your debugging skills.